If your goal is to achieve $100,000 on eBay in 2024, I believe it's these three crucial steps that you must follow in order to achieve it. And when you break it down, it isn't actually as big of a scary number as you might think. It means you're generating $274 in sales every day. Let's say you have an average sale price of $30, that means you'll need to sell around nine items per day. This is my third year of selling on eBay and it's also the fastest I've been able to achieve this figure, hitting 100,000 on October 8. Here's a breakdown of my numbers. Now trust me, this hasn't come down to luck. I've been following these three steps that I'm about to take you through that's allowed me to be able to achieve this goal. And if you follow the same steps, you'll be able to achieve it too. I've never met an eBay seller that's been able to get to six figures by listing inconsistently. Listing up 15 items every single day is fundamentally the reason why I'm in the position that I am at this time of year. I've listed up 15 items live every day, no matter what. It's the discipline and the consistency that's allowed me to get here. And I think that's all too much of a common issue for a lot of eBay sellers out there. And I get it. I'm a full-time seller. A lot of you guys are trying to do this part-time and you're trying to grow it, you're trying to scale it. But I truly do just recommend that you pick yourself a number and if the goal is 100,000, you might not be in the position to be there immediately, but you can grow towards it. You can start with five listings a day, turn it into 10 listings a day. And at that point, over the 12 month period, you should be upwards of 100,000. Now I say that, but I'm working off my average sale price of $34, around that 30 to 35 average sale price. It all comes down to what you're actually listing up. If you're listing up thousand dollar items each time you list an item, you're not gonna need to do 10 every single day, but it really comes down to what products you're trying to sell. And as long as you're focusing on strong sell through rate, I think that's gonna get you there a whole lot quicker as well. It's certainly something that I've focused on over the last 18 months and what I'm referring to with that is basically just focusing on how many items are listed of that product currently on eBay versus how many items have sold on eBay of that product in the last 90 days. That ratio will really determine whether or not your item is gonna sell relatively quick or relatively slow. And I've focused on that and I've actually seen a faster turnaround of I think an increase in about 30% of sales volume in a quantity sense. So that has certainly played a massive part for me getting there a little bit quicker, but you really wanna focus on those two things. List a certain number consistently, get that number down pat, and then from there, make sure that they are quality listings that are going in. Doubling down on my best selling categories has been a huge focus in 2023. And I really do think it's been able to fast track me to the point that I'm at. I've doubled down on DVDs because it was my best selling category last year. My seller analytics said to me that 26% of my sales last year was DVDs. That was my number one category. So I focused on that even heavier again this year and I've actually grown it to a 34% portion of my overall sales. So it was a proven category that had worked in the past. I'd seen really good sales, really good revenue around it. And sure enough, I've been able to grow my business by focusing more and niching down into that number one category that I have. I've also added in a new category this year. So as much as you want to triple down, double down onto the stuff that was working for you in the past, you also want to be focusing on new opportunities. And for me, that came in the action figure category. I got my hands on a bunch of different action figures, a category that I've never sold previously very much before. And then I was able to get a whole lot in January focused on selling them. And and then I saw some incredible sales come through and I ended up trying to source more of them throughout the year. They're now my third best selling category this year. I've seen a huge jump and that's allowed my business to accelerate as well. The other thing, the third point when it comes to stock management uh, would be around killing off the categories that aren't doing so well. This year, I actually said goodbye to a really slow sell through, uh, sell -through rate category for me anyway, and that was clothing. I actually got rid of all of my clothing. I sold them for the price that I pretty much bought them for, $5 or so a piece, and I just removed it from my in inventory altogether. Every now and again, I'll pick up a, an item that I know would sell really well in that, in that category of clothing, uh, but ultimately, I don't sell it. I'm focusing more on action figures, video games, and DVDs. So having that understanding, focusing on the products that you're trying to sell, seeing some success in a certain area, and then doubling down on it is only a smart move for you guys to grow eBay does a great job in trying to help you as a seller. There are so many different tools that they offer you and I believe every single one of them needs to be utilized. I personally use the big three. I, I do markdown sales and things like that, but the big three that I'm referring to is coupons, 
promoted listings and best offer send and acceptance. So my, my stats around looking at that this year, 47% are best offer acceptance or send. So basically somebody shoots me an offer and I say yes or no, or I send them an offer as a counter and they accept. 40%, uh, 47% of the time, that's how a sale gets generated. So you need to be having that best offer. Some people don't even have the best offer feature turned on. You need to have that at least activated as an option for the buyer because everyone wants a deal out there and no wonder half of my sales have come on a negotiation. The other one as well is 60% of my sales have come via promoted listings. Now you're probably thinking that's a large expense. Well, not really. It's 3% once the product goes on to sell additional to the 12% in standard fees. So I know that roughly speaking, I'm about 15% out of pocket on the sale for the fee, but I'm getting 60% of my sales come through because of that. So imagine how much revenue I would lose if I didn't want to hold off on giving away that extra 3%. Makes sense, right? There's such a massive discrepancy in giving up 3% to generate 60% of sales. So please make sure, I've said this a number of times on my channel, make sure your promoted listings are on and make sure that you're doing at least 3 to 5% would be a really good starting point to test the waters. Uh, the other one as well is coupons. I've got a, a coupon that runs the entire year. It's a checkout uh, activation, 5% off uh, at, at checkout for every single one of my items, no matter how much it goes on to sell for. I just do that because I know that it's another incentive for somebody to want to buy the product if they see another bonus of 5% off. So I'll cater for that sometimes, to be honest with you, not even really, because I just know that again, like the promoted listings, it'll generate revenue for me. Um, so I don't really even bump the price up, but if you were nervous about it, you could increase the price by five to 10% and then put the coupon on to cover the cost. Uh, but the way I see it is by offering a coupon, I ultimately just get a lot more sales. And I would say 80% of my sales uh, have the coupon used. So again, a huge thing that eBay are offering you to to promote the opportunity for you to generate more sales. And if you're not using any single one of them, uh, you're, you're really losing out on the opportunity to make more sales and get to that $100,000 in revenue. Now, what I want to do is I want to take you into a day in the life of me as an eBay seller. I want to take you through 10 sales that came through over the weekend that have got a really, really high average sale price. There was a lot of chat in here around sell-through rate. There was also a lot of chat around international sales, which I didn't touch on, which is another thing that you guys should be doing. But that's 10% of my sales is international. In this what sold that I want to take you through now, I want to take you through 10 of my best, really high ASP, a lot of international sales. And these are some products that I've been selling consistently for years. And if you're unsure sure as a beginner seller and you're reaching for $100,000 in revenue, um, these are some of the sorts of things that do really well. We're also going to go out thrifting in this video today too because as much as we're selling stuff and listing stuff, we need to go out and find stuff consistently uh, as well. So that routine is something that I always do each and every week. I'm always trying to find 105 items to be able to list up, to be able to sell 15 a day that we spoke of. So I'll show you some of those items that we're going to pick up as well. It's a massive video. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Please consider hitting the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 20 5,000 before Christmas. We're almost there and your help would be massively appreciated. Let's get into the what's sold. All right, coming into number 10, this one here, Yokai Watch. A really good DVD series if you found a fair few of them. Courtney and I were in an op shop. I think this was just last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Last week, um, we found this. It just looked interesting. I'm always curious by these sort of anime style designs on the DVDs. And we searched this one up, four disc set, complete series one. That was the giveaway that this might've been worth a few bucks. And we got $30 for it. So that'll go into a tracked envelope. Uh, should cost us about five bucks to ship off and a $30 sale price with a really good sell through rate. So Yokai Watch, try and find all of those. All right, coming in at number nine, guys, we've got the Nike Air Max 90s. These are the winter greys. We got a $50 sale price on these ones. The size is pretty decent as well, US size 11. You're actually gonna to start to see a fair few shoes come through. We got quite a number of sales in the shoe category, which was fantastic because if you are watching our previous what sold, uh, sorry, uh, trips to the thrift last Thursday, um, we bought a lot of shoes in that video. So it's funny how when we start to list up a lot of uh, shoes into our store, we get a lot of the old shoes come through and sell. So here's the first one as an example of that, the Nike MX 90s. We've sold these so many times and we didn't pick up these too long ago either. Sell through rate would have only been a couple of weeks on these as well. So because they are a, sli a slightly larger size, US 11, uh, we're probably gonna fit them into a medium satchel but um, that'll cost us about 10 to $12. We bought them for 15. Uh, so it means that we make around about 15 to $20 worth of true profit. 
Now, this was a viewer sale. Uh, trip to the Thrift last Thursday. I picked these up. It was a big US size 13 and secondhand gang Vic, uh, a, a reseller based out of Melbourne. Um, he's a, a bigger size. He's US size 13. So he's picked up these Asics Gelcano 28s. Um, they are in excellent condition. I paid $15. I said to him, I said, what, what do you want to pay? And he said he'd give me $60. And I thought that sounded pretty fair. Um, it'll go into a medium satchel again, $10 to $12 for that. Um, so we should be able to make ourselves maybe $20 to $25 in profit, um, considering we've got $60 compared to the, uh, the Air Maxis that went for $50. Um, so really good pair of shoes. If you guys watch the channel for any length of time, you'll know this is my favorite shoe to sell, the Asics Gel Kayano. Uh, big size 13, really good sale. And big thank you to Secondhand Gang Vic. Here's his Instagram. Go give him a follow. He's a good bloke. Now, the Asics Gel Kayanos that you just saw, I also, on the same op shop, was able to get my hands on these just last Thursday. A pair of Nike uh, Air Max 97s. Love the colorway of these. Actually love the 97 the most out of these Air Max shoes. Um, this was an awesome one because it was again a US size 13. Some guy had dropped off all of his shoes and I was the recipient in the op shop paying $15 a piece. So a US size 13 on these in excellent condition, literally so much wear left in these. Uh, we listed them up for $65 and they sold for $65. That's I think why they've come through so quickly. Um, there are comps on eBay for these sorts of shoes anywhere between $100 to $120. Um, so depending on the colorway, I think if you were to find a pair of these shoes, uh, you should go with 100 bucks. I'm happy to take a quick sale at 65, considering we only paid 15 for them. But um, like I said, it's just a really good shoe that you wanna be trying to find if you're out and about hunting down your shoes. So this one here, it was a really good sale that we picked up off a viewer. Um, so it was a subscriber buy that we did for a bunch of Pokemon cards. We bought a few other Pokemon bits and pieces that have gone on to sell as well. I think we spoke about the bag, um, that clear Pokemon bag in last Thursday's video. Um, this was just another really good win um, that I actually didn't realize the true value of. This is a Dark Charmeleon. Uh, it's a Team Rocket edition, but it's actually got a W stamp. And I'll put some B-roll up to show you guys what we're referring to with the W stamp. But just because that little W is on there has turned this card into a $60 sale price. And we also got $20 worth of international shipping. It's off to the UK. Um, so this is a pretty crazy card. I think if it didn't have the W stamp, um, it's worth something like 20 bucks. But considering the W is there, it, it inflates at times three. Um, so this one's an old 1999, 2000. It's a vintage Pokemon card. And we've been selling a lot of Pokemon cards lately. And I am placing a focus into trying to find Pokemon cards. Um, so if you do have any cards out there that you're happy to sell or you're looking to get rid of, um, definitely shoot me a note on Instagram because I am buying and selling these things and I'm learning a lot about the categories as well. Um, so yeah, that W stamp, Dark Charmeleon, that's something to be on the lookout for. All right, the next one was a really good one, guys. We've got Sea Change, the complete series one to three. I really like this because there is only three C, uh, series to the complete set. Um, region 4, $75 worth of a sale price for this thing. And we got some international postage, um, $25 worth of international post. So $100 worth of revenue. I would have only paid five to $10 for this in a thrift store. Um, it did sit around for a few months, but I did see the comps on eBay that was sort of showing 70, 80, 90 odd dollars worth of value. Um, so I knew that it was just gonna be a matter of time. I held on to the top dollar that we had it listed for and it was really nice to see some international sales come into it. Hopefully you guys are doing international sales. They are still worth about 10% of the sales that we generate. And you've seen a few here today, the, the Pokemon card um, that sold for, for international and this one as well. So um, make sure your international postage is turned on and please, for the thousandth time, make sure you're looking out for box set DVDs. Now, I think these are the third pair of shoes that we got in last Thursday's Trip to the Thrift video. If you've, if you've missed that Trip to the Thrift, please go and watch it because these sales have all come through. We've got the Kayanos, we've got the 97s, and I also picked up these, and they sold on the very same day. So Scarpa, there it is there, that's the brand. Really good hiking shoe brand. These are a size, I think that was like a size seven. So they're not, nothing too crazy in the sense of being a bigger shoe size, um, but that Gore-Tex as well, that Gore-Tex is something that caught my eye and I didn't know of the brand Scarpa as well. So there was a lot of telltale signs, along with the fact that these shoes are in excellent condition as well. That was three really big ticks for me to go ahead with the purchase. I paid $15 last Thursday in a trip to the thrift, and these sold for $70 plus $30 worth of international postage yet again. Uh, we're sending these ones off to the USA today. 
So fantastic to see these shoes that we're picking up actually return over the space of two or three days. Um, these scarpers though are actually the quickest. They sold in a couple of hours. All right, now this one, I'm surprised that this sat around for as long as it did because it is our second of three Pokemon sales. There's another big Pokemon sale coming up, but um, this one here came in at number three for us over the weekend. It's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team on the Nintendo DS. I think I picked this one up. Do you remember when we went to the Sunny Coast and we caught up with Laura? Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I bought this off Laura. So that was oh. that was a couple of months ago. Months ago, yeah. That was a few months back. Yeah. I thought we would have seen a turnaround on this a little bit sooner than we did. Um, it is complete with manual, albeit Courtney said to me though that the... <laughs> oh, bless you! Bless you! Um, said that the game wasn't in there. She tricked yeah. me, but um, gave me a mini heart attack. But it is in there. It is complete. Uh, and $85 is a fantastic sale price. So, look, I just think Pokemon is just the best category to be selling on eBay. If it's video games, action figures, cards, whatever the case is, plush toys, if you find anything that is genuine Pokemon, Nintendo, Tommy, um, you, can, you, can, you can get some really good numbers for it and you can get some good sale price, which is what eBay is all about. So, we'll put that one into a tracked envelope. Won't be too much to ship off. It was a local sale. Good to see. All right, guys, now number two, number two I've been hiding up here between the seven dwarves because this is a great sale, guys. You might have remembered that I went to Melbourne and I had a pretty big bucks weekend. I drank more beers than I did thrifting, but I did come away with one thrift store find, which were these things, and they were a fantastic purchase. Nothing that I knew of to begin with. I saw these in the glass box. They are Axel Arigato high-end fashion wear. It's a big brand, big label over in, the, over in Europe, I believe. Um, but Axel Arigato, US size 10 men's. These are the marathon edition running shoes, casual shoes. And there were some comps on eBay talking between two to $300. So I went down, I paid 40. Yeah. I only paid 40 bucks in a Melbourne op shop and they're in the glass cabinet. And there's comps on eBay for $200. So 200 bucks is what we got for them. International sale yet again. I don't know how many of these have actually turned out to be international, but there's been like four, I think. Yeah. yeah, and normally we're doing 10%, so we're well overs on the averages of international sales. But you know, $220 worth of value on this to only pay $40, um, this, is, this is huge. But it's not number one though. We've got one that's even better than that. This has come in at number one. Check this out, guys. We've got a full, complete base set of the first edition, well, not first edition, but 1999 Wizards of the Coast uh, Pokemon cards. So what you're seeing here is every single card that is a common. So these are non-holographic cards, but it's a complete set. So it starts here at number 17, and it goes all the way up to card number 102. So there's no cards missing. I went through this. It took me hours to work out exactly what Pokemon cards I actually had from that big um, Pokemon card buyout that we did in America. That's where these cards have come from. He actually had the complete base set of 1999 cards. Um, so there's 86 cards all labeled up in correct order here. And uh, somebody has gone ahead and bought these after them being on eBay for, I would say, probably the best part of four weeks now. Um, they had about 15 watches uh, on it. And um, finally, we had a full asking price sale come through. They didn't even use the 5% off coupon that I had activated ready for them to use at checkout. Uh, we got a $275 sale price for that one right there. And uh, g'day, mate. Yeah, mate. Oh, hello, mate. Just got this for you. No stress. Don't know. Actually, not sure where this has come from. We'll open that up later. That can be a little mystery opening for us. Um, all right, so where were we? We were right on number one when he turned up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 275 bucks. Picked it up in America. Oh, we're just working out how to ship this one off. And I think the best way to ship it off is going to be to double box it. Yeah. Don't you reckon? Yeah. Or maybe even not even double box it, but maybe put some cardboard like we would do for a single card. Yeah. Two big sheets of cardboard, tape that up, and then put that into a, another box. Yeah. With some with some uh, butcher's paper. Yeah. Let us know if that's how you would do it. There's 86 cards. I'm, I'm leaving them in their sleeves. And I'm just going to do that with some cardboard to, to firm that up and then put it into another box. And I think that should be protective enough. It's a domestic sale. It's not going internationally. But yeah, $275 on that. There's the top 10 right there, guys. We've got five pairs of shoes, some DVDs, some video games, some Pokemon cards. 
all for an incredibly high average sale price weekend. <laughs> we've got, we're using the hands. No worries. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Eve. See you later. All right, we've just teleported to Wednesday. Courtney's back. And uh, we need 45 listings to round out the week. So we're going to go into this first op shop now. We're actually going to go into four op shops to try and find these items. That's one alone. Yeah, great. But so, is other one? I've also got these, which is the Diary of a Minecraft Zombie. And all of these, all of these books are just 50 cents each. That'd be alright. I've got this author here. These are all Jacqueline Wilson and they're all hardcover books. That one's a paperback, but it's the same author. So we could do that as a bit of a bundle as well. I'm just looking at these. Podge and Rodge. One, two, three. Uh, first, second, and third. I think it's. I think it's definitely worth it. Mm. And then I'll check this one as well. Good mate. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Oh, pretty good from Yeah, good to hear. Oh, yeah. In good condition. Yeah, I'm Yeah, nice. May as well. Mm -hmm. Eight dollars. All right. So what do you got? Saturn Vibe, which is like a very expensive brand. Women's wear. Yeah, corduroy as well. Mm -hmm. Size nine, which is a kind of popular size for six dollars, and they go for about fifty. About fifty. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. It's something because that was that in the women's section, or was that? Yeah. yeah. See, I never look in there. Yeah. Um, so that's a great grab and corduroy it just seems in general um, you know pants obviously hats is the big one that I look at but we're going to list that up for $49.95 yeah. and we paid six dollars and then obviously we've got some good shoes there by being able to go out the back of this store and that's just building the relationships over the years these feel of disruptors I've sold so many times but I actually really like that yellow is that yellow yeah. yeah, I'm colorblind. Um, that yellow on the bottom is kind of a cool little feature. And then these New Balance are in pretty good condition as well. Patriot 12s. I didn't comp them up, but um, three pairs of shoes, a pair of pants. That's another four listings to go along with, probably seven from the first store. So we're at 11 listings. Let's keep moving on. These are great. $15. That's awesome. Soles are in good condition. All right, now here's something I've never seen before. Check this out. We've got a collection one of Backy the Grappler. It's $10, it's a six disc set. It's got some tape on it that I'm gonna have to check to make sure all of the discs are in there, but a collection two sold for $40 and a collection one and two sold for $80. So I think this here could be about a $40 DVD, which is a fantastic find. And then I've also found this, which is a classic. You get about $25 to $30 for this. This is Dragon Ball Z Season 3. It's $10, but I just know that the sell-through rate and demand for this is really quite high. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do both of those for $20. Sounds like a lot, but it'll definitely sell for about $60 to $70. And then I've got this here, Heart of Dixie, the second season. I'll just leave that one there, but that is a fantastic show to find. There's only four seasons of that show out there. Um, then I also found there was, which was really quite frustrating because there wasn't a season one and two, but there was the rest of the episodes of Seinfeld. The price on that though, have a look at that, $8. So we won't be doing that, but that is a good show, uh, show to find. So I'll just do these two here for 20 bucks. All right, we're back now, guys. Uh, so there it is there. So we've got three, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 listings. 14 listings, not too bad. Uh, we paid $83.50 for all of this, and I think the estimated resale value is about three to $400. So I think for one little crack at the op shop, what do we do, three or four of them in the end? A uh, pretty good little turnout for what was only just a couple of hours. Any final words, Courtney? people tuning in should subscribe to the channel yes they should <laughs>